Welcome to Welcome Totally, totally, woman, totally podcast. woman Podcast. Totally Woman totally is a woman bi-weekly, is a bi-weekly podcast, podcast that uncovers that essential, essential health, health, knowledge health knowledge and highlights, and highlights inspiring, inspiring, journeys inspiring journeys that transforms, that transforms women's, lives. women's lives. I'm your host, I'm your host Rosemary, Crosdale, Rosemary Crosdale, a licensed, a licensed adult, adult gerontology, gerontology nurse, practitioner, nurse practitioner. And this season, and this season we want to hear, want from, to you. hear from you. Email us Email at totally us at woman totally pod woman pod one gmail dot gmail dot com and find us and on find Instagram, us on Instagram at totally at woman totally pod woman to join, to our, join conversation. our conversation. While we encourage, While we you, encourage to you to listen to this, to this podcast, podcast, podcast for, health tips, for health tips, it is not, it is a, substitute not a substitute for a relationship, for a relationship with a primary, with care, a primary provider care provider or a clinic. clinic. Now let's get now let's to today's, get to episode. today's episode. Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome back to Totally Woman, episode eight, season two. Yes, it's episode eight. We're in season two, and I am so thankful for having you all join me on this platform. Thank you for your continued support, you know, supporting this platform. I really, really appreciate it. I thank you know, all the women, young, old, middle age, who listen to me from, you know, different states, different countries, you know, shout out to India, shout out to, you know, Jamaica, my motherland, my country land, you know, shout out to people in Florida, shout out to, you know, Brooklyn, Queens, Bronx, you know, the boroughs here, shout out to Charlotte, North Carolina, Shout out to, you know, and if I'm forgetting anywhere, Canada, all these people who listen to me on this platform, I'm so, so grateful to you all. Also, a thousand of you have joined in to listen to this podcast, and I am so, so happy. Thank you. Thank you so much. So as we continue this Stress Awareness Month, I would like to welcome back Well, do I want to call her totally woman resident psychologist or what am I? I don't even know what I want to call her, but I feel like she's become resident now because she's been probably on. I think this is going on to be her third episode that she's graced this podcast with her presence. And I am so, so ecstatic to have her. Heather is a mental health nurse practitioner She is board certified, so she knows exactly what she's talking about. She works in this capacity. She's been doing it for years. She has her own clientele, her own patients. So it's indeed a pleasure. The information that you're getting, ladies, is nothing, you know, that we just like pick up off the roadside. This is a board certified mental health nurse practitioner who knows what she's talking about. She has a wealth of knowledge. She is just versatile in this position. She knows what she's doing. You know, we've worked together. We have a very good reputation. Whatever she has to say is truly valued, valued not only by me, but also by her patients that she represents. So ladies, ladies, let us give an applause and welcome the lovely Miss Heather Dennis back to Totally Woman podcast. Thank you, Heather. Hi, you want to say hi to the ladies? It is so awesome to be back <laughs> with you all. You know, I am a fan of the show. I'm a friend of the show. Now I'm a resident. I will take it, take it, take it. Right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Can you imagine season two? We're up to oh, season, season, right? Two. You've been season one. And this is actually your first time coming back during season two. So welcome to season two, right? Episode eight. Thank you so much. I can't thank you enough. And you know, during this stress awareness month, I mean, stress, you know, the the last time we gave, you know, the technical definitions of what stress is, and we know that stress comes and it affects us in so many different ways, right? There's no one size fit all with how, you know, stress is. And, you know, at the end of the day, I think the takeaway from it a lot of the times is how we bounce back, right? How we bounce back as women, how we deal with it. And that's the conversation that we're having today is, you know, just how do we bounce back? Stress is going to come. We have to deal with that. It's just, you know, 
life issues and all of these things. And we're just going to have you, you know, just give us some guidance, give us some pointers, stress. Sometimes if it's not dealt with, it can become medically challenging to us. Like you told us in previous episodes, you could lead to depression. It could lead to anxiety. It could lead to physical, actual physical illness if it's not taken care of. So, madam, the floor is yours. <laughs> All right. So the bouncing back, right? The coping. Right. That I think is extremely important. Right. So that brings me to one of my pointers that I wanted to discuss today. Just for us to remember why. Right. Remember why you started that thing that is causing the stress. Right. Because it is a thing Mm -hmm. that's that's causing the stress. Right. It's causing it. Yes. Right. So what are you doing? Right. What is it that you're doing that is causing the stress? Let's look at that. So if it is childcare that's causing the stress, if it is some household chores that's causing the stress, if it is work that's causing the stress, I want you to remember why you started that thing, right? And now, once you remember why you started that thing is what things can we put in place to help navigate it, right? Sometimes we need to outsource, right? Sometimes we need to call on our neighbors, right? Recognize that oh, I have, I'm having a problem right now. This is overwhelming, right? So that awareness, yes. see, right? And then mm-hmm. ask for help. So let's ask for help. Oh, God. Say it again, Heather. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but as women, I don't know why we think we have to be burden bearers and, you know, we just take on so, so much. Mm-hmm. Say that again about asking well, for help. I think um, you have to say that again. <laughs> Asking for help, outsourcing, delegating a task, right? These are all things that it is. Yes. It can be so cumbersome, right? Just to ask, just to recognize that you mm-hmm. need help and to ask, yes. right? Because there is a portion yes. of yes. maybe if I ask for help, I won't be received properly, right? So yes. you, mm-hmm. you, you probably are thinking about like the rejection portion of it. Right. If I ask mm-hmm, for help mm-hmm. and then I don't get the help that I need, or if I do ask for help, am I going to be rejected? Right. But it's, yes. you know, how we'll tell our kids to to be brave. Right. Or we're going through something and we'll say, be brave. I want you to just remember that you can be brave. You can be courageous. So just ask for it. Practice it. Just practice it. Yeah. Right. Go ahead and practice asking mm-hmm. for it. I need help with this thing. <laughs> Okay, I need just practice, right? We say practice become perfect. Yeah, we'll yes. continue to practice. Exactly. It. Yeah. Outsource. Outsourcing, right? If you have, you know, if you if you possibly can, I would say get on to task rabbit, right? Outsource a task. If the money is a concern, let's get our children. If there's no children in the home, I want you to call on your neighbor, call on one of your best friends. Right. We need our community. We need our community so that we can rely on each other to get the necessary help so that we can move from this point to the next point, because we don't want to be stuck in a thing. Right. Once you're stuck in a thing, it can cause anxiety. It can cause depression. It can cause sleep issues. It can cause headaches, tension, bowel issues. So you don't want to stay stuck in yes. this one thing. So right. asking for help, I think is good. Delegating tasks, right? If you haven't introduced a few things to your children, like doing chores, making their bed, cleaning up after themselves, I would say this is a perfect time. Oh, yeah. To task yeah. Day. The school year is almost completed. So oh, it's part of I, summer break. Right? Yes. Summer break. So mm-hmm. get them used to like cleaning up for themselves. Like so that you as a parent not doing the dishes, not doing laundry, you're not cleaning up after the kids. Help them because you're going to allow them to be good citizens. Right. And this is also going to help you with stress because if your place is decluttered, if your place is clean, that can be one source of stress. So helping to yes. keep your surrounding clean is going to also help with stress reduction. I know I'm saying a lot, right? Because I spoke about right, remembering right. why you started this thing, right? That we're talking about like delegated mm-hmm. tasks, right? And we're talking about outsourcing and getting, if it is a, a task, a, a task rabbit involved, 
I know you said Task Rabbit. Is it somewhere that you go that you can ask for help to do something or what is Task Rabbit? Yeah, so it helps you with it's something, it's a paid service. It's something that you would have to pay okay, for. Okay, got it. Yeah, so you would have to pay, pay for. for it and then you'll search for, you'll let them know what task you need help with. And then they right. will set a price for you and come and help you. With okay, it. got it. So this is yes. for, you know, this is for tasks that it's a little bit, you know, if you're trying to set up uh, furniture or if you're trying to move some big items right. or into that in fact. Right. 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 So then right. you'll have someone to offset those tasks for you. Yeah. Help. Right, right. <laughs> and I know money, right. and I said money can be a concern, right? right? It can right. be a constraint. So yes. what I want to yeah. do is leave, these are just resources, right? I'm not going to all task to do every, every single possible task, right? But I'm looking at the task that I can handle. And if I can't handle it, then I'm going to have someone to come and Ask for help. Yes, yes. Yes. Definitely. And even like I was even thinking of an option too. I remember, you know, sometimes in terms of when the kids go out, I mean, we're using this as an example. Sometimes maybe if you have some vacation time stored up, now is a good time also maybe to take a, va- you know, so if, if childcare is your issue and other things that came up, maybe you can also take your vacation around this time as well to be off with the kids so that you wouldn't have to, I mean, it's still going to be an expense, but it it wouldn't probably be, you know, so the daycare part of it would probably be something that would be taken care of, you know, if if that's something that, you know, if if you have that option then to do, you know, because not all of us have that option, but if we have that option and it's given to us, maybe we could take our vacation around that time or something like that. Yes, good stuff. So, I mean, separate from that, and yes, just with this, with the kids going out and stuff like that, separately now, you know, we're dealing with the kids. We think we have to do everything. So, you know, ladies asking for help, very, very important. What other, what other, you know, stress relieving options then can we also suggest to implement to the ladies that they can use to help them? I like planning ahead. Planning ahead. I know you mm-hmm. mentioned this and on the last podcast, right? Planning ahead, it makes your life so much. It's, it's all about the freedom, right? Because with stress, right, right. with stress, it's so overwhelming and you feel like you're out of control. You don't have the freedom. So planning ahead will allow for some freedom. Okay. It avoids for last minute, any kind of last minute doing. So I know we said the kids are, and I want to transition away from the kids, but I know it's maybe a little bit too late right now to go on vacation for <laughs> this week. Right? <laughs> we know that, but it's, you know, we know that there's a, a Sunday in every week. We know that there's the kids have holiday, a couple holidays out of the school year, right? So I want you always to plan ahead, right? You have more insight yes. into yeah. your calendar you have more insight into your life. So I think it's much easier to, okay, let me sit down and try to plan at least three, four months in advance so that when that time comes around, right, you are not stressed for what am I going to do with the kids, right? What am I going to do? Exactly. Right. So we have some time now for the summer break so that we can talk about that, right? What are the kids doing for camp? What are you doing for a summer break? Are you taking your PTOs, right? How much PTO have you accrued, Mm -hmm. right? It's so important for you to take some time off. And in order for you to take some time off, right? You need to plan ahead. So yes, yes. yes. and planning ahead now, what what helps with that is being organized, right? Staying organized. You need to have a planner. Let me tell you something, Rosemary. See, this thing, this is, well, this is my homeschool planner, but I use it for everything. Okay, I always yes. have my planner beside me because it, there's too much things going on in this brain, right? One of my favorite things to do is uh, with everything that's going on is to stay, is to be mindful. Being mindful, Rosemary, is going yeah. to help us. Not only is it going to help us externally, but it also helps us internally. 
right? It connects right. us to our sympathetic nervous system. It allows us to take that pause. It allows us to take that rest. It allows us to take that break and to just concentrate on our breathing, right? Just concentrate yes. every yes. single part of our body from our head, from the mm-hmm. crown to the toes, right? Exactly. So, mm-hmm. There are so many guided meditation. There's so many guided mindful um, nest videos that you can watch on on YouTube. There's podcasts for it. There's a plethora of um, mindfulness videos. Five minutes, maybe five minutes is too much. One to two minutes of some mindfulness is going to give you a lot of rest and relaxation and deep breathing. It doesn't cost a thing. It does not cost a thing to take to take exactly a, right to take a deep breath, hold deep it, breath, and then give it back to the air, Mm -hmm. right? So do that, right? Take some time to do that. You know, right now Mm -hmm. I'm listening to Lilla John, right? You know Lilla John, turn down for what, right? Lilla John has the meditation. I know. (laughs) Right, he has a meditation album. Wow. And I- You have a meditation, wow. Yes, uh, and I listen to every night. Okay, every night I have uh, Lilla John on- listening. I played for my son and it, it's so helpful to just, again, it, we have to give back. We have to give back to our bodies. We have to have good practice every single day to help us to recover, right? Because it's all about just recovering and feeling rejuvenated, right? That recharge, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And the best thing to do is to just take pause, take pause, take a break, take a breath, and, you know, just do some deep breathing. So that's one I love. I love mindfulness because, as I said, it doesn't cost anything to to do that. Right. I started out by saying, you know, remembering why you started. Right. That thing, that thing that you're doing. Yes. Mm-hmm. When you have hated that task, I want you to just celebrate. Right. Celebrate every possible win in your life and recognize that that's a win. Right. Rem- remind exactly. you exactly we don't the- celebrate the wins at all yes we 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 don't because we're so used to having yeah. this stress in our life right yeah so when something positive happens it goes by like oh okay and and then you're back to stressing again right so take the time to really celebrate your achievements right acknowledge celebrate every milestone and achievement yes. to just stay positive and to stay motivated because that's going to help you to stay motivated as well, right? If you remind yourself, oh, look at that hard decision that I had to make, it probably between, you know, two job offers, right? And now you have to make a decision about which job I think is best, right? I want you to remind yourself that you've been making decisions for yourself for so many years. And maybe some of them are not so yes. positive, but <laughs> I want you to focus on the positives. Right. Focus on the positives, right? Mm-hmm. So that you can walk mm-hmm. in your space fully knowing that, hey, I am going to be okay with this decision that I make. Right? Exactly. So I want yeah. you to yeah. celebrate. You have to be right? confident in whatever you do. Yes, yes. Yes. So those are some of the those are some of the like pointers that I really think is important to keep in mind to help with stress management. Because, again, when stress is not dealt with, right, it is going to show yes. up in your body. It's going to show up in your yes. it's going to show up in your neck, your head. Talk about that part, uh-huh. Heather, when it's not dealt with. Yes. Yes. So yes. stress is mm-hmm. not handled properly okay it shows up as inflammation okay so a lot of times you're Mm -hmm. walking around like a swollen ankle a swollen joints right your gut is Mm bloated right your shoulders right your neck your head right this is the inflammatory process that your body is going through right right? oh wow is so So now your body is responding Showing some mm-hmm. physical signs of the actual stress that you're going through. 
absolutely high blood pressure, right? These wow. are all inflammation, yes. right? This is all inflammation. Yes. Your heart is inflamed, your arteries wow. are inflamed, right? So mm-hmm. how can you really, really focus on just letting that go, right? Some things we just need to let, let it go. Walk. Yes. You know, sometimes, you know, it's, it's hard to say we're going to put it behind you. Well, just put it beside you. Put it beside you for now. <laughs> okay. I don't want it to yeah. be in front of yeah. you. So you're stumbling, you know, you're stumbling over it. I know it's, it's tough to say put yeah. it behind you. So put it beside you and walk, right? Right. In your space. Right. And then sit down and, and, and let's see how we can really go about handling this thing that's keeping you stuck in one place, stuck in thinking the Mm -hmm. same over and over again. That's keeping you up at night, can't sleep, right? You can't function at work. You can't focus. You can't have a conversation with, with your friends, with your loved one, because this one thing is just replaying in your mind. If it is an email that you sent yesterday, let that email go, (laughs) let it go. Okay, let it go. Already went. Right? You can't it take gone. it back. And I take it yes. back. What I like to do, especially if I'm in the moment and a little bit unfocused, maybe I won't send that email right now. Right? Try, try, just try to just take a breath. Right? But what is it then when you really have to react in that moment? Right? How do you do? You can still take right. a breath. You could still take a breath. You could still choose. Yeah. You could still choose. Yeah. I am going to choose in this moment not to respond because the way I'm going yes. to transmit, it's probably going to be offensive to someone. Right. And you right. It's going to go the wrong way. Yes. yes. If you're coming off offensive to me, I am going to, the first thing I'm going to do is defend myself. Right. So right. how can right. you just, you know, maybe I need to step back. I mean, we tell our kids, I tell my kids, count to 10, count to 10 before you. Yes. Right? So maybe <laughs> before, you do, before you do that, right? Because it's all about how we are transmitting what we have to say, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I think that is such a good way to, you know, to actually process something because it, it, you know, we do that and we put it out there and then we can't take it back. And now you're stressed about it and it's gone already. Sometimes, like you said, if you just took a few seconds just to say to yourself, is it really worth it for me to respond this way? Or maybe don't respond at that time. Just wait a little bit later, you know, and then respond later when your head is in a better space or something. Those are the things that can alleviate some stress. Oh, my gosh. It's crazy. And it's also amazing to see how. You know, if we're not dealing with stress, if we're, you know, the way how we deal with them, like you're telling, you know, like you're saying, you know, how our physicality can be affected in terms of, you know, like your guts, your, you know, different things. Some of us have stuff that we haven't forgiven, even forgiven ourselves, yeah. you know, and other people. We're walking around with unforgiveness and until some of these issues are dealt with and taken care of that are that, you know, the stressors then themselves are taken care of, you know, we're going (laughs) to, we're going to be walking around with so many different issues that are going on. Yeah. Wow. Heather, this is amazing stuff. I can't even tell you enough, but you know, yes. And we talk and, and the deep breathing and, and all of that stuff. And, you know, very, very positive. What are some final takeaways then? that we can just leave with the woman about, you know, just to wrap up this conversation in terms of, you know, dealing with their stress and how not to let the stress then become to the point where it is so overwhelming that it's going to cause them now to experience some physical issues or something like that. Before we get to that point, you know, what, I mean, I know you have talked about different things that we can do and stuff, but just to just sum up the, you know, just to just give a, summation or in conclusion then <laughs> of this conversation how would you kind of just like end it all you know yeah you know you know we know we see that stress can significantly like impact a lot of things a lot of aspects of our life but we also see the opposite right if you're coping if yes. you have like great coping tools or just remember that you have some tools and i want you to just remember in in this moment it's so important for you to like recognize things that you do. I know that when I'm stressed, I'm pacing. 
So the minute I stop pacing, I'm reminding myself, Heather, you're anxious. Stop pacing. Here are things yes. you can do to relieve mm -hmm. whatever it is that caused you to stop pacing. Right. So that insight, that awareness, I think every podcast that you invite me to, I'm going to talk about awareness. OK. Yes. I think it's yes. super important to have that awareness. Know yourself. Right. Know the things that pushes you and know sure, the things that kind of like limits you. Right. And here are things that mm -hmm. I can do to help me with recovering. Right. right. Rosemary, initially, when you're doing your when you're doing your introduction, you mentioned that this month also serve as maternal health month. I want all the, you know, all the women of conception age to remember different services, right? Like a doula, right? Get in doula care yes. to help you with, you know, these are professional trained people who can help with every aspect of child rearing, right? From conception of the child to, to death, child process. Yes. right? Yes. Yeah. So talk to your healthcare provider about like additional services to help you with that. So just remember what stress can do and that you do have ways that you can counter counteract um, these stressful events because you want to yeah. reduce or minimize the insult that it causes on our body internally. These insults are things that you cannot see, like inflammation. Sometimes you won't see that there's an yes. inflammation in your in your head or in your gut, right? But it does, it, it builds up and it builds up and it builds up and it can cause a world of issues. So recognizing and actual have an actual, and yeah. actually have an action plan for it. And then celebrate you, celebrate, celebrate, celebrate every moment that yeah. you have, <laughs> just celebrate, celebrate, okay? Yeah. Take yourself out to dinner, take yourself out to yeah. walk, mm -hmm. take yourself out to, you know, to yes. take care of whatever it is that you like to do yeah. with your body, to hang out with your friends. Mm -hmm. You know, it's always nice to have really meaningful, engaging conversation with our friends, right? And and, yes. and yeah. don't forget to, right? Don't forget to connect with your primary care provider as well, right? As well. For all those yes. health treatments. Yes. Right? Oh my God. Thank you so much, Miss Heather Dennis. Thank you so, so much. If there's anything that you can take away from this and with stress, and we know that stress is something that will come. Life happens, different things happen. We sometimes cannot get rid of, you know, just at some point, it's going to affect us in some point. If it hasn't affected you yet, I don't know, you know, what you're doing or what's going on. If it, you know, and maybe you're just doing a good job. Well, you know, kudos to you as well. But at the same time, you know, plant your feet, you know, put your 10 toes on the ground, flat on the ground, you know, taking a deep breath. And like Heather said, just practice some nice deep breathing. It doesn't have to be anything that you have to go out there and spend a lot of money to do, but there are ways that you can counteract stress with, you know, that, you can just do some simple little things for yourself, just like Heather says. And we want to just incorporate these things into our everyday lives just to make our lives. And, you know, it, it, our lives won't be like totally stress free, but we will be better for it. Right. We'll be better able to deal with it and we'll be better able to handle it. Right. Because we're not saying that it's not going to happen. But when it does happen and like Heather says, you have to have a plan. Some of us, we don't plan. We procrastinate, we wait until the last minute, and then we're stuck in a rut. And those are the things that will cause us to even be more stressed. So have a plan, you know, plan ahead, write it down, journal. Like Heather says, she has her notebook. She cannot do anything without it. I have my planner as well because, you know, I have color coordinated pens, like red ink for one, green for the other, blue for this, just to, you know, keep manage my schedule because I need to be focused in that because then I would probably show up somewhere where I, where I shouldn't be at, or, you know, or something like that. But ladies, just be kind to yourselves. I want to stress that so much. A lot of times we're so quick to put ourselves down, but be kind to yourself and know that you're doing that the best that you can and whatever changes that you can make then make those changes, but be kind to yourself. 
Okay, take time out to yourself. And like Heather says, reach out to your primary care provider. I always stress that if you don't have one, then you should be getting one to just make sure that you're even up to date with your wellness visits, your screenings are up to date and all these things. Okay, so ladies, be kind to yourself. And like we always say on Totally Woman, continue to inspire and to motivate and to uplift each other. I can't wait to join you on our next episode. Have a wonderful day. Totally Women podcast is hosted by Rosemary Crosdale. This episode was produced by Kwana and Wise Grisette. Episode artwork by Estrella Grisette and powered by Indie Creative Podcasts.